Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible, hallelujah, is our only standard and authority for truth. And when you can find the answer nowhere else, friends, look to the Holy Bible, for it is God's word for your life. Well, friends, do you love Jesus this morning? Have you told him? Have you simply said thank you for the many blessings, the spirit, the word, Christian fellowship, the freedoms that we enjoy, the beauty and loveliness that lies within nature, the opportunities that we have for fellowship and worship? Have you simply said thank you, Jesus, this morning? Well, I trust that you have, friends, for there is much that we have to thank him for. Now, we're continuing our study through the book of James, and today we're going to be picking up in verse 21 where we last left off. But before we jump into our text this morning, there's a couple of things that I would alert you to. First of all, it is the first of a new month. So we are retaking the challenge of reading the New Testament within the next 60 days. And if you'd like to participate with us, I strongly encourage you to do so simply by reading five chapters of the Bible. Now, if you do that, you're going to finish just a few days shy of the end of April, but you can simply take that time to read other passages or other books of the Bible, maybe even in the Old Testament that you would like to read. For me this month, for instance, when I finished, I finished around the 23rd or the 24th. And so I felt a real desire and passion to read the book of Isaiah, which I did. But I finished that early, so I read the book of Jeremiah, and I finished that today. And so now I'm going to begin in the book of Ezekiel, and then after reading that, I'm going to read the life of Elijah, which we'll find in, I believe, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, and maybe even portions of First and Second Chronicles. But the point is, is that we have a desire to read the word of God and we obey that desire because the flesh isn't going to give us the desire to read God's holy word, nor is our enemy Lucifer, Satan, the devil. That desire only comes from the spirit of God. Those who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled, hallelujah. And we take our filling from reading and studying the word of God. So whether you're reading along with me or you're reading the Bible on your own and following your own system or your own schedule, at least you're reading the Bible. And I cannot overemphasize the importance of reading the Bible every single day, friend. Well, now the second thing that I'd like to point out before we begin our study is that a viewer contacted me and alerted me to the fact that they could not watch the video of James chapter 1, verses 16 through 20, which would also have been the video for the one a day for March the 1st. It just would not load for them. So I went in to see if it would load for me, and it wouldn't load. So I deleted it, and I re-uploaded it, and now everything seems to be working well. So if for some reason you just didn't alert me to the fact that you were unable to watch those videos, they have been uploaded, and you should see them just prior to to the videos that I uploaded for today. And last, but certainly not least, I want to take another opportunity to say hello to all our viewers in Bangladesh. Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus, and may you be blessed for your hunger and your thirst for the Word of God to better understand what it is God wants us to know so that we can serve Him faithfully each and every day of our lives. Now, if you, if you haven't watched the video on March the 1st, then you're not going to understand what it is that I am referring to. So I, I would recommend you go back and watch that video. But for those students in the School of Ministry under Radoy and Shipra Roy, and for those who are watching in other places across the world, I want to let you see what Jesus is doing. And I want you to know that you are a part of, of what Jesus is doing in taking his word, his truth, to people that you're not even aware of. And although these two videos are very short, they were emailed to me from Bangladesh, 
and I want you to see what God is doing through our ministry in other parts of the world. And I want to say with much heartfelt gratitude for your prayers and your contributions to this ministry, thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus for all you are doing for us. Take a moment and view these videos as I share them with you. And like I say, they're very short, only 15, 20 seconds apiece probably. But you're going to see the ministry in Bangladesh, the students as they are learning, and Radoy, who I believe is interpreting to them, because English isn't their native language, he's interpreting what it is that I'm teaching. And then after these videos, we'll jump into our study on the book of James. If you do that, you'll read the New Testament once every two months, meaning that you'll read the New Testament six times a year. And that will transform your life. But not only to be a hearer of the word, a reader of the word, but to be a doer of the word, to conform your life to the message of the Bible, each and every minute detail of your life. Learning that self-denial and sacrifice is a key ingredient in your journey in becoming a faithful follower of the Lord Jesus. And so if you're tired of a watered-down message, if you're tired of a message that is all about you and less about Christ, if you're looking for a ministry, as 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2 tells us, that preaches the word, that is instant, in season and out of season, that will reprove you, that will rebuke you, that will exhort you, and will do this with patience, kindness, love, and care, then friends, we welcome you to our ministry. For it is our intention to exalt the Lord. <laughs> Well, welcome back, friends. And wasn't it such a blessing to see what the Lord Jesus is doing through such a simple ministry? And I'm speaking of Haya Kadosh Ministries, a simple ministry out of Durango, Colorado, out of a small home, not even a home, the lower portion of a two-story house. And yet God is taking his teachings and feeding his people who are so hungry in places where truth is just not as accessible as it is to us here in America and other parts of the world. And so may the Lord Jesus receive all the glory and honor for what is being done through this ministry. And again, thank you from the bottom of my heart for your prayers and your contributions and what you do to help this ministry thrive. Well, with that being said, let's jump into James chapter 1, and let's pick up in verse 21. Now, before we do, let's, let's remember the context that we're in. All good things come from the Father above. That's what we're told in verse 17. So nothing bad, all those things in us that we call bad, those evil desires, those evil wants, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, all of these things come from the evil one, from the enemy of our souls. And yet as God has given us a new heart and we now desire good things, we know that all these good things come from his hand and are truly a blessing unto us. Understanding that, we're now to live a life of discipline and we're to discipline ourselves to follow the things that are good and deny the things that are bad. That's basically what it says in verse 19. Let us be swift to hear, good thing. Let us be slow to speak, bad thing. Because oftentimes what comes out of our mouth, especially in an impulsive situation, doesn't represent the Father whom we serve. And let us be slow to wrath or slow to anger, slow to act on our emotions, slow to impulses. So there's a life of discipline here 
where we're not allowing ourselves to act impulsively. Well, because of this, James picks up in verse 21 and he says, now that you understand the life of discipline that is required, lay apart all filthiness. Say no to filthiness. Filthiness is simply dirty, defiling behavior. And there could be many examples of this, but we don't need to elaborate on it. It's simply dirty, defiling behavior. Things that do not honor God and things that do not give example to the change that he has made in our lives. So let us discipline ourselves to set these things to the side, to not participate in them. Next is superfluity of naughtiness. Now this simply means abundant malice. Malice is doing something with the intent to hurt someone else. And obviously that's an evil desire. That could be revenge. It could be an act of spitefulness. But let us set this to the side. Let us not treat others with any desire within ourselves to hurt them. This could even be in the form of gossip, defamation of someone's character, and intentionally saying things to hurt someone. Well, James says, put these things to the side, and rather than those things, receive with meekness. Now, this word in the Greek means a supernatural inner grace. It's beyond what we are naturally inclined to do. It's a supernatural meekness given to us by God. And we receive it from the engrafted word, the implanted word. The more we read the word of God, which is the light of God, truth is light. And so the more we allow light into our dark souls, and our souls are only dark because they have been programmed and they have taken on the image in the world in which we live. And so we're ridding ourselves, we're reprogramming ourselves of those things. We're getting the darkness out and we're allowing the light in. And the more truth we allow in, the more darkness flees. And truth being light and truth being the word of God, the more word of God we get into us, the more darkness flees. And so we began to take on the character of the word, which is the character of the Lord Jesus. And the truest character is humility, meekness, which again is a supernatural inner grace. And it is this grace, this supernatural work of the Holy Spirit, which is able to save our souls. It is able to keep us pure before God. But let us be careful when we read the Bible and we allow the light to permeate us, let us be careful not to only be hearers of the word, but may we be doers of the word. For it does no good if we're reading the Bible, but we're not conforming our lives to the Bible. We're not conforming our words to the Bible. We're not conforming our thoughts to the Bible. We're not conforming our actions to the Bible. So let us be hearers of the word, but more importantly, let us be doers of the word so that we do not deceive ourselves. For if any man is a hearer of the word only, he is like a man that is looking in a glass or looking in a mirror. He sees himself, but as soon as he leaves, he forgets what he saw in the mirror. Because when we're looking in the mirror, we see the flaws that are upon us, that are within us. But when we walk away and we forget about those flaws, we often think too highly of ourselves and we begin to see ourselves better than we actually are. But the word of God doesn't allow us to do that. It constantly reminds us of our flaws. And once we see those flaws, we can go to our father. We can confess those flaws. We can repent of those flaws and we can ask for victory over those flaws. And that's why when we look into the perfect law of liberty, which is the word of God, and we continue therein, we fight and we struggle daily to do what the Bible is encouraging us to do and is commanding us to do. And so let us not forget what it is that we are reading, but making this the constant focus of our minds, let us be a doer of what we are reading. And if we do this, we will be blessed. Now, James says in verse 26, if any of you are only looking in the mirror, seeing your flawed self, walking away and thinking better of yourself, if you think yourself to be religious, 
And you're not comparing yourself to the word of God, but you're comparing yourself to the evil men that lived upon this world. In, in other words, if I compare myself to Hitler, I look mighty good. But if I compare myself to the Lord Jesus Christ, in all of his perfection, all of his splendor, all of his wonder, all of his awe, friends, I don't look very good at all, and neither do you. And that's what James is saying. If you are comparing yourselves to men of this world, and you think yourself to be religious, and yet you do not bridle your tongue, you're not disciplining yourself in the things that you say, you're deceiving your own heart, and your religion is in vain. If you want to know what pure religion is before God and the Father, it is this, that you would visit the fatherless and widows in their afflictions. Now, the fatherless and the widows were the ones who were in greatest needs at the time that James was writing this letter some 2,000 years ago. But there are many others that we can give our time to in, in this world in which we live. And this may be the poor. This may be the handicapped. This may be the disabled and it may be the elderly. But James is simply saying pure and undefiled religion is to visit and spend time with those who everyone else is rejecting and overlooking. And so don't use all your free time upon you and your own enjoyments given to yourself to help and meet the needs of others. And then he finishes defining what pure and undefiled religion is with the perfect definition of holiness. He says we are to keep ourselves unspotted from the world. He elaborates upon that in chapter 4, verse 4, when he says, friendship of the world, or to be spotted by the world, makes you an enemy of God. And so the question here would be, well, how do we keep ourselves unspotted from the world? And it's simply this easy, friends. We ask ourselves how the world views it, whatever it may be. Music, entertainment, movies, fashion, politics, a particular mindset, a particular view upon a topic. How does the world, the majority of the world view it? How does the majority of the people of the world see it? If they favor it, then the Bible tells us God does not favor it. If they promote it, God frowns upon it. If it's acceptable unto them, it's an abomination before God. And so the way we are to measure the things of this world is simply by how they favor it, how they view it. Do they accept it and approve of it? Because this world is the enemy of God and basing our judgment by the way the world sees it, views it, accepts it, approves it, tells us what God thinks of it. And as his people, we're to stand on the side of God, not on the side of the world. We're to be the friend of God, not the enemy of God. And so James ends by saying simply, pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, in their distress, and to keep oneself unspotted from the world in which we live. And that's not always as easy to do as it is to say, but it is certainly the goal that has been set before us, friends. It is what God demands of us, and it should be the focus of our lives and the one thing that we give all the attention of our heart unto. Or as Jesus said it best, deny yourself, deny this world, take up your cross and follow me. May that become your priority, friend, as you seek to love and honor Jesus in all you say, all you think, and all you do. And if you do that, friends, you will truly hear the words, faithful and good servant, on that great day that is coming, not so far off in the future, when we stand before the Lord and we give account for the lives that we have lived upon this earth. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. Thank you for your prayers of this ministry. And please remember Radoy and Shipra as they do their work for the Lord in Bangladesh, a nation that is over 90% Muslim, and yet they work so diligently each and every day 
to bring the gospel of the Lord Jesus, the message of our King, to those who so desperately need it most. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.